We're going to talk a little bit today about trees again. This will be, I think, our last lesson on trees. And we talked before, what is the advantage of the tree when we store information and retrieve it? What is the fundamental advantage that the tree gives us over, say, a linked list? Fast retrieval times. So what is the retrieval time for a linked list and what is the retrieval time for a tree? Mr. Nikita, sir, can you tell me what is the retrieval time for a linked list? Oh, then, and what is the retrieval time for a, a BST, a binary search tree? O of log n. And we agree that this happens as long as the tree that we're discussing re re remains relatively balanced. What happens if the t tree degrades and starts to look more and more like a linked list? What would that happen? What would the search time for that tree then uh, devolve into? Yes, Mr. F. Sorry. It, it turns and looks more like a linked list, so it behaves more like a linked list, and the search times start to degrade and head toward O of n. So what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about some techniques that are used to make sure that that doesn't happen, that the tree does not degrade. And it turns out that in computer science, there's probably a half a dozen schemes that are out there to keep the tree in balance. But there are two that are way more popular than the others, and those two are called red-black trees and AVL trees. The AVL are initials of two Russian computer scientists who came up with this scheme. Now, I will tell you, I'll get the bad news out of the way first. I started teaching these uh, things about two, three years ago, and I've gotten some really good data that suggests to me that coding red-black trees and understanding them conceptually is just too difficult for my students. I've tried it, and not only are the students unable to do it, they're even, not even close to being able to do it. I do think that by the time you get to college, you've had more uh, time to sort of uh, gel as, as a computer scientist. You'll be able to handle these topics. But here, trying to do red-black trees, coding them, or even doing them on pencil and paper has proven to be too difficult. So therefore, I'm going to teach you AVL trees instead. Now, red-black trees are important, so I'm just going to show you a brief four-minute introductory video on them. And I will also point you to a series of videos on the internet done by a guy named Michael Sambal, which is the best set of videos I have seen on red-black trees. And if you want to pursue them on your own, so that when you get to college that you have both of these uh, techniques down pat, then I encourage you to look at those videos and pursue them uh, certainly on your own. We're going to follow this other branch here, little tree joke there, uh, and discuss AVL trees. We're not going to code AVL trees because that's also very difficult. We're just going to do them on paper. So in other words, I'm going to hand you a tree. I'm going to say, OK, the tree's out of balance. How do you bring it back into balance? And you have to show me what you do to the tree to bring it back to balance. Okay, So we're just going to discuss it theoretically. And that'll be it. That'll be our discussion. I think if you get the main concepts of an AVL tree, you'll be most of the way there in terms of understanding how it works so that later on, if they ask you to code it in college, you'll have a good head start. I've tried to assign this as a coding assignment. It, it just doesn't work. It's, it's actually a little bit harder than Dijkstra, so I don't think it's going to be a good fit. OK, so let's first talk a little bit about what's the same about these two. And in fact, I think the other techniques that are used to keep the trees balanced. As far as I know, there are no techniques that can take a link list that is like highly unbalanced and then suddenly turn it into a balanced tree. That's not how these techniques work. That's not how the other balancing techniques work. What they do instead is that you start with a tree that's balanced. And then as you add or delete elements, if it goes out of balance, you do stuff to the tree to bring it back into balance. In other words, you keep the tree balanced all the time. If you, if you like create the tree and it's like super unbalanced and you're like, OK, now I'm going to fix it, neither of these things can do that. Okay, It's just once it gets too far out of balance, it can't be fixed anymore. So the, the idea behind both of these strategies is you keep the balance all the time. And if it goes slightly out of balance, then you bring it back into balance. That's the idea. Okay. Now, uh, I mentioned to you, we're only going to very briefly visit red-black trees. I'm just going to show you a, a video. And then we're going to spend the rest of our time, probably about a class or a class and a half, on AVL trees. This is where we'll really dig in. So let me start off by showing you a little video here on 
red-black trees. 